the literal figure of Jesus Christ as most people speak of him and about him. Um, well, it seems to have been fabricated from previously existing stories and um, symbolism. Now, why do I say that? Yep, yep. Uh, even even people would say, well, look, he was the one who was crucified on the cross. And OK, let me stop you there, because <laughs> um, pre long before way, way long before there was this story, long before this historical figure that allegedly even existed, there were saviors on crosses in many different religious beliefs. Um and the the the, the pagans was. had one. The, the 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 pagans had yep. one that I recognize easily. I know that there's images of a South American um, religious figures That's who right. were also put on crosses. But this is not the only two places where this existed. The idea of crucifixion and the symbol of the cross. Again, like you said, you can find it in the Hindu religion. But I mean, right there, just that symbol alone. And then people say, well, he was the living God who was resurrected in the story. Okay, I understand your story, but do you know that that existed long before the historical figure was even allegedly born? Now, what I find fascinating is that a true believer, sometimes when confronted with this, and you say, listen, it's not that I don't believe, because there's a great deal of truth in what it is that you're speaking about. You know, the the ideals, the concepts are all wonderful things that you're talking about. But do you yep. not understand that there's these things missing? And you know what they say to you sometimes, Jordan, is that somehow or other, you know, it's like, look, the devil is capable of time travel, apparently. And what he's done is gone back and laid these things in the past to dissuade the true believers now from understanding the truth. And uh, yep. have you ever heard this before? And, and you know... Oh, my God, I hear it all the time. And it's the sorriest excuse that I think I have ever heard is to tell me that the devil knew that Jesus was going to do all these things. So he had all these different religions uh, uh, come before and do the same identical thing. And therefore, when Jesus comes along, now we will say that uh, Jesus was, the, the story of Jesus was just copying all these other religions and so the devil has fooled everybody because he's the one who put all these ancient religions together knowing that Jesus was going to come and do the same thing well that's the same idea that uh, you know and back in the 1500s somebody wrote an incredibly interesting novel fascinating and it was a big seller and then a couple of hundred years later everybody has forgotten about it and somebody found a copy of it and they rewrote it and put their name on it and it became a big seller because it was a sensational story. And that was in the 16 or 17 hundreds. Then maybe a couple of hundred years later, it all died out and everyone forgot. And then in the 19th century, somebody happened to come across that document. And they rewrote the story and put their name on it. And then it became a big seller again. And, and then, well, you know, it died out. And then in the 20th century... Uh, it comes out again. We call it a new name, a new name, but it's the same old story. And today, and so when you confront the author today and say, well, this is just plagiarizing something that's been written five or six hundred years ago. It's been written about ten different times. And this is the same story. He will tell you, no, 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 no. Everybody knew that I was going to write this book, and it was going to be a big seller. I'm going to make a lot of money on it. They're going to make a movie out of it. And so all of these people knew that I was going to be famous and write. So that's why they, uh, you know, put the story out there that they wrote it. But the point is, is I wrote it. I just wrote it uh, brand new. But all of these others knew I was going to do that, and so they put it out first to make me look like I'm plagiarizing. No, it's not making you look like plagiarizing. You are plagiarizing, period. And so I don't care how you explain it away to the people who are a very low IQ, but I've been around the world. I know what plagiarism is. And when I can see it retold seven or eight times in the past 800 years, and here it is again brand new, I know what plagiarism is. I know that you copied it from somewhere. So most people will use all these silly, nonsensical, uh, you know, 
ways to get out of the fact that, no, you just copied something that's been copied in. And the reason why they do that is because they've given their life to that idea. They've given their life to the story of, of the Messiah who died. And so they've been preaching that to other people, and they've been telling other people how they're ignorant and ill-informed and don't know the real story. And so now they have committed themselves and their whole life and their wife and their children and their family and their whole family's family. Uh, everybody is committed to that story. Now it comes out for the first time uh, again that this is nothing more than just a copied story from something else a long time ago. And now that person who's given his whole life to that idea and proselytizing and preaching it everywhere he now has to justify uh, how he believes it to be absolutely true. So come up with some kind of a corny, a goofy uh, reason why uh, this is telling us. Because if not, then it's going to look like you're a fool and you bought into something that you know, has been around for a thousand years before you were born. And now everyone's going to laugh at you because you bought into it. You were the apostle uh, proselytizing this story. And now you're going to have to make, you're going to have to defend your belief. So come up with some kind of a half crank, half uh, goofy answer as to how you happen to be believing something that has been, uh, been told before. And that's why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told not the greatest collection of historical facts the greatest story that's a whole story in itself where did this story come from about a man named jesus who died on a cross because the first 200 or fact no it was the first 600 years of christianity there was no man on a cross in christianity go back into the history books go back encyclopedias and you will find that for the first 600 years of Christianity, there was no man on a cross, period. They never understood uh, Christianity to be a man who, whose name was Jesus, who died on a cross. That came uh, after a certain uh, church councils in Europe decided that they needed to put a man on the cross and make it more personal to humans. And so if, when you read that, you see that, well, well, for the first 600 years of Christianity, there was, there was no man on a cross. They didn't even know what you're talking about. So I'm just saying if you want to do some homework and do some research and, and academically go back and prove what it is you believe, you will find of all the wonderful things that you know are just not true. 